Number 17. The initial concentrations or pressures of reactants and products are given for each of the following systems. Calculate the reaction quotient and determine the direction in which each system will proceed to reach equilibrium. Okie dokie. So first things first, let's find that reaction quotient. Remember, the reaction quotient is a Q value, right? So we've done tons of problems just setting up how to find the exact Q, uh, Q value expression. Here, we're going to be using QPs specifically. P stands for pressure because A, the K is in KP, so the little subscripts have to match, and they give us all pressure units. ATM is a type of pressure, right? A type of, a type of pressure unit, so you got to use QP. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to rewrite this equation a little bit bigger just so I can work with it. So I got two SO3 gas comes to equilibrium. There's a double arrow. 2SO2 gas plus O2. Okay, so the next thing, I'm just going to write down what the numbers they gave me. So for the SO2, the SO3 in the beginning, they told me that I had 1.00 ATM. Perfect. And then the products, they told me that for the SO2, I had 1.00 ATM. So I'm writing that down. And then for the O2, the same number. Okay. So let's set up the Q expression. Products divided by reactants, right? That's any Q or K uh, equation. It's just products over reactants. But now we're just going to do a little different denotions. We're not using the brackets because that's for QC. We use P's for the pressures, right? So I'm going to say it's the pressure P of SO2, we're starting with the products, right? Now, since there is two of these, I do have to put this number and raise it to the second. Then I go to the next product. I got the pressure of O2. And this one, I don't have a coefficient, right? There was no number. So that means that there was just one of them. But remember, anything raised to the first is the same number. So I don't have to really write that. And now let's just work on the denominator, the reactants. So it'd be products, uh, not products, pressure of SO3. And now there is a coefficient. There's two of them. So I have to box this off and put a two. Beautiful formula. Let's put in the numbers. QP equals. We can kind of probably guess what the Q is going to be. The numbers are all ones but let's just see, right? So it'd be 1.00, that was SO2. This has to be squared times 1.00, right? The pressure of O2 is 1.00. So maybe I'll just put, put, put it like that, 1.00, close that up. And then SO3 was also 1.00. Do you start seeing what the Q might be? This has to be squared. The top, right, we have just ones, so it's one, right, or if you want to say 1.00, and then the bottom is the same thing, one, you know, squared is 1.00, so the Q is just going to be one. Now, if we do th sig figs, technically I had three sig figs to start off with, so I'm just going to leave it as three sig figs, but technically this should be just equal to one. So we have the answer to the first part. Now, in order to always find the direction in which this equation is going to go to reach equilibrium, we always have to compare the QP with the KP. From that comparison, we can say that either we're going to the right or we're doing the reverse reaction and we're going to the left. Now, in order to do that, the first thing is I, I gave out all the rules here so that you guys can memorize them. But there's like a, a, a trick, all right? So I put the Q on the right side and the K on the left side. And maybe I'll say, you know, these are specifically P's. The Q was 1.00. And the, the K value they told us was 16. 
Now remember, this is the standard. This is what it should be at equilibrium. Remember what we said, what, uh, what a K value is when it's greater than 1. 16 is greater than 1. That means that we're favoring the product side. We need to make a lot of products. But where are we? Are we close to 16? No, we're only at 1. So it looks like the KP is larger than the Q, right? And when that happens, this is what's going on. You have way more reactants than you need. So if you have way more of this, you will shift this way. You got to use these up to get more products. But here's the trick, guys. If you put the Q on the right-hand side and the, and the K on the left, treat this as an arrowhead and pull this back. Look at that. You see how I just made a, a direction? I think that that's pretty fun you're going to go to the right. And that kind of makes sense. You want way more products than what you have at the moment. This K is greater than the Q. So we're going to shift or proceed, whatever you want to say, we're going to the right. And that's it. Basically, you are favoring the forward reaction. That's it, guys. Hopefully this helped. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching the video. All right. Hopefully I'm giving you great educational content. Let me know in the comments. Love talking to you guys. I hope you're doing well. Let's keep studying hard. Good luck on all your future tests and quizzes. And if you want to help us out, please press the subscribe button. Thank you so much for that. And I will see you in later lessons. Bye-bye.